we go. Andrel, just noticing that you are alive, I seem to have missed some things. I apologize. A um, couple ways you can stay informed. You're probably already subscribed to the channel. Do that. Also, join the Discord if you haven't done that already. I put the updates and the announcements in there about, since I'm going to start doing more of these lives, I'll put some things in there about that as well. And it's where I kind of keep the community updated as well. Or if you're a supporter, I put the posts out on Buy Me a Coffee and Patreon as well. Um, so let me know what you would prefer. I try to keep everybody as up to date as possible. Here we go, guys. New Nightwish. New Nightwish. Let's get it. Holy crap, dude. This is this is intense. This is really intense. I don't know what the song is about just yet. It's nine and eight. Uh I don't know why I'm surprised. Typical, typical nightwish. Um I even like the lyric video. I wonder if they're gonna release a music video for this. Uh it's intense. Yeah, the, there's there's a lot of fast double kick in this one. Um still my number one thing i i feel like floor needs to be turned up even in this song she's up higher than in than in the day of but i feel like she needs to be up just half a db just half a db just push her just just a skosh just a skosh more also i've noticed on specifically perfume of the timeless not necessarily the day of and this one are cramming in a lot of words it's a lot of words Almost to where there's no memorable walkaway melody, you know, which is which is atypical from the things I've been listening to from, you know, 2023 Vakken, you know, like where all the all the classic tunes, there's something you walk away with. Um not really something to walk away with just yet. But again, we've got seven minutes of song left, so let's see where this goes. Cool. 
did you hear that gong hit? Did you hear bwah, that gong? Yeah, man. So epic. evil floor going on. I like that. Ooh, beautiful acoustic. Finger picking action. Come on! <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, there's still two minutes left. Beautiful.
playing two notes at one time dude that was freaking epic that's been my favorite one so far that has been my absolute favorite off the new that i've heard off the new album only heard three that's my favorite the you okay the you yulian pipe you Eilian pipe um this was okay. There's one section that I want to hear again, and it was right around, right around here. This kind of their ending, right? Because they had a little, like a kind of like a little ode at the end. First of all, how Troy could make a double reed, aggressive sounding instrument sound so beautiful. It's the same as like an oboe sounding beautiful. An oboe is very hard to sound pretty very hard to sound pretty unless it's played the right way this dude accomplishes that there's one section here that i i want to hear this part yeah yeah, yeah. Go to this halftime feel here. It's cool. Come on. They throw these triplets and listen. Dude, that's a freaking killer ending right there. Oh, I'm all smiles. My face hurts. Holy jeez. Woo! Maggot, thank you for joining us, man. You're incredible. Appreciate you. Whisper. Oh, hold on. I got I got I got chat to catch up on. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That one was awesome. Okay. Um, Andrew, you're forgiven. I think this is the best song so far. They, I would agree. I would agree. Double kick rumbling. So I've got, I use the Shure SE 435s. They're, they're triple drivers. Typically you have like double drivers, dual drivers, but my triples have like a lot of low end, low end compression. And so I can feel, I can feel those double kicks rattling my brain right here. Um, Russ said, speaking of double kicks, have you used one of those single double kick drums and if so what do you think i need some clarity do you mean the one pedal that that's got two beaters that you can rotate and did it did it did it with one foot or do you mean the two pedals that have like two beaters over here but you've got two different pedals like this which one are you which one are you asking about if so i personally own a double kick pedal where I have two pedals in the bar and I have two beaters on one on one bass drum. I have the Pearl Power Shifter Eliminator with a blue fabric strap drive with blue cams, if that makes if that if any drummers out there care. Kai is the best on drums. Kai is Kai's incredible. He's incredible. If you guys haven't seen, I did a I did a I did a reaction to the to his drum playthrough of Ghost Love Score as well. That was that was really good. Look, Lord Whiskers of Floofyberg. Is that a reference, or is that is that, or did you ask Chat GPT to make your your name? Makes me wonder how Floor would remember all the words for the song when singing this live. For sure. For well, 
you guys had said that she learned like the whole 2013 set list in just a couple of days. So I'm, I'm sure she'll be fine. My only worry here is that this song was so epic. There wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot of hook to it. Certain section, like I, I, I think this song had certain movements in it, almost like a symphony had certain movements. Each movement had its own little hook, but I'm walking away really with this, with more of an overall feeling, not necessarily a hook from, from the song. Uh, R. Olson says that Tuomas writes stream of consciousness lyrics, I think. Interesting. And there were a couple of hooks, the gong of destiny. Yeah. Um, so back when I was playing in the trans Siberian orchestra tribute, but if you guys want to see a video of that, I'd be happy to share that as well. Um, I had a gong behind me. It was a 30, 36 inch gong because we did, we did a trans Siberian orchestra version of Carmina Burana. Boom. Oh, Fortuna. And so I, I had this giant beater that I made with a, a uh, wooden dowel, basically like a, like a broomstick and a hockey puck that I screwed into the end and I wrapped the hockey puck with yarn and that was my gong, gong beater. Oh, Fortuna. But during the song, I had to play doom, doom, bop, doom, bop, boom, boom, doom, bop, boom, bop. But I still had to hit that gong. So I came up with this method where I had one of those sweatbands. I had a sweatband on my left wrist and on the gong beater, I had a little, um, like a little rope and I put, I put the rope on my arm and I tucked it into the sweatband so that the gong beater hung from my arm. So what I did, I did this for like five years during the song is, uh, so the drum part was, um, boom, boom, dun, 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 boom, gong hit, right? During that one beat while I was crashing over here, I would swing, swing the gong beater up with my left hand, catch it with my pinky and basically throw it while it, you know, while it kind of fulcrums and pivots at my, at my wrist here. Cause it was hanging. I would, I would grab it and I'd throw it so that I could still play drums with a drumstick in my left hand. So boom, boom, doom, bam, boom, ba, boom, boom. So I did that for a long time until we stopped playing that song. Um, but that one was really fun. Okay, here we go. Uh, cool vocal melodies. That one did have some cool vocal layering in it. Again, I just, it, there's some sections where her vocals just get lost, especially when all the orchestra comes in. It gets, it gets a little too buried for me. Maybe the album will be better and maybe it's just the YouTube compression. I don't know. We'll see. 